Okay, welcome back. Um, the last section we got to cover in 12.5. Uh, we have some applications um, concerning exponential growth and decay. And these are common problems that we'll see later on if you take college algebra. Exponential growth slash decay. And I've kind of uh, shown you the forms. One goes up real fast, the other one goes down real fast. The formula is just a little bit different. If you remember last time, our formula for the exponential growth was, uh, you know, we had this picture like this, and this would have been y equals b to the x, where b is greater than 1. And then we had this other picture, like this, which is y equals b to the x, where b is in between 0 and 1. Okay? And I call this one exponential growth and this one exponential decay. And that's the, pretty much the idea here. Um, but we're going to include something in front of the base, and then we're going to put an extra factor in the exponent. Okay, And the end result is just going to um, transform this graph a little bit. You know, It's going to maybe move this point up um, maybe a little bit down uh, and uh, s sort of smush or stretch the uh, the the curviness of this, okay? But these basic forms are the idea. And uh, let's, so let's, without further ado, here is the um, official form. So f of t equals a sub zero e to the kt. And they also write it without this f of t. So you know how you can write f of x equals mx plus b? But you could also write it y equals mx plus b. It, it's the same idea here. So instead of writing f of t equals a sub 0, we, we can write y equals a sub 0 e to the kt. But in general, what they're going to do is just write a equals a sub 0 e to the kt. Okay. So hopefully, I mean, it's confusing. I know. This thing is different than this thing. This thing is just some number they're going to put in there. Okay, So like 3 or 2 or 7. Um, this is like your, your y variable. So if you want to think of it, it's kind of like this. y equals a sub 0 e to the kx, where a sub 0 and k are to be determined. Okay, They'll give you a sub 0 and uh, k. Or you'll have to do some math to figure out what these guys are. And then once you figure that out, you can put them into this equation and use it to answer questions. Okay, So these guys, you have to figure out what they are. The, the book will give it to you, or you'll do math to figure it out. Okay? So to be announced, TBA. OK. Um, so the, the pictures, again, um, exactly the same as up here. We won't focus on the negative portions, though. Okay? Um, we only want to concern ourselves with the positive portions. So now, instead of having this tail go this direction, we, we just concern the first quadrant. Okay? So there's nothing there. And then, whoop. Okay? So that would be the exponential growth. And when k, this value here, k is um, given to be greater than 0, you have the exponential growth. Okay? So this is the form when k is greater than 0. And when k is less than 0, you have the exponential decay. So in that case, it's coming down from up here, and then it hits the y-axis, and it decreases. All right. Um, a sub 0, these things that are to be announced have sort of physical interpretations. So one um, interpretation is to think of it like a population of bacteria. So A sub 0 is the initial population of bacteria. It's the number of bacteria you start with. Okay? So it's a constant. It's given to you. Um, so A sub 0 is your initial population. Okay? 
And then K is considered your growth rate, how fast it's going up or how fast it's going down. And these equations are important in modeling the world around us because uh, some people have called these kind of equations the language of the universe. And if you look at uh, physics, they'll have a ton of these exponential equations. And calculus, that's about all you deal with um, after a while, is exponential equations and the rates of change and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Okay. So let's try to look at a couple problems. I don't think we'll do too many in here, but let's take a look. So first problem is number three. Okay, let me get my book open. Take a while. Um, all right. Look here. Whoops, wrong section. Sorry. Just one second. I'm almost there. Okay. So uh, the exponential models describe the population of the indicated country A in millions T years after 2010. Um, use these models to solve the equations. So we have some uh, models here. In particular, India has the population model 1173.1e to the 0.08t. So what was this? This is India. So you put in T for time, and that's the number of years at the year 2010, and then the output will be the population in millions. Or the other ones, here's Iraq. So A is 31.5E to the 0.019T. So another one is Japan, 127.3E to negative 0 0.006t. And then finally, Russia, which is A equals 141.9e to the negative 0.005t. Okay, so problem three is well, let's look at problem one, right? So let's just look at problem one. It says, what was the population of Japan in 2010? Well, maybe I need to, to remind us what is the what are the variables. So T is the um, number of years in millions after 2010. Well, sorry, number of years just after 2010. Sorry, I butchered that statement. T is the years after 2010, and then the A is the population in millions, okay, at time T. Okay, so let's look at one. Um, problem one says, what's the population of Japan in 2010? So there's two ways to look at this problem. Um, one way is just to substitute in t equals zero. Right? So the number of years after 2010 in this case is zero, or in the year 2010, and then take zero and plug it into your, your equation for Japan. Right? So a will equal, the population will equal um, 127.3e to the negative 0 0.006 times 0, which is 127.3 times e. Anything times 0 is 0, so I have 127.3e to the 0. And then that's just equal to 127.3 times 1, which is 127.3, and we're talking about population, so that's 127.3 million people. The other way to do that is just to look 
at the equation. Look here. The thing that's sitting right here is a sub 0, the initial population. It's just 127.3. Okay. So this would have told us also what the population was in the year 2010. That's, two, that's a sub 0 right there. Okay. So either way you do it, you get the right answer. Let's try um, number three. Number three, they want to know which equation or which uh, country has the greatest growth rate. Okay. So what they're asking for is the k value. And in this case, the, all the k's are given to us. So the k here is 0 0.08, k here is 0 0.019, k here is negative 0 0.006, k here is negative 0 0.005. So when it's negative, it's not growth, it's decay. It's going down. Okay? So it's either this guy or this guy, and you just look for which one's bigger. So it looks like India has the biggest growth rate. So I'll write India. Oops, and it should be 0 0.008, so it's not actually India, sorry. It's Iraq. Back and K is 0 0.019. Okay. Um, all right. So let's um, move on. Um, let's see number nine. So number nine. What's that about? Um, they give you a bunch of information and want you to complete the table. So we're talking about um, countries and populations again. So number nine, they're worried about the Philippines. And uh, they note that the population in 2010 is 99.9 .9 million. And then they uh, give you the, the growth rate is 0 0.0095. And they want to know what is the uh, projected population in 2050. So we need to construct that formula from before. A is equal to A sub 0 e to the kt. Okay, so in this case, they give you kind of the A sub 0 and the k. That was the to be announced material that I mentioned at the beginning. So if you remember when I first started, I was like A sub 0 and k to be announced. And here it's easy, they give it to us, so we could substitute that material into the formula. So the future population is a sub 0, which is 99.9, .9, and then e to the k, which is 0 0.0095 times t. All right. So to find the population in 2050, in other words, when t is 40, which is just 2050 minus 2010, I substitute 40 and for t into our found equation. So a will be 99.9 .9 times e to the 0 0.0095 times 40. Okay, so I go on my calculator. And I end up with 146 million, approximately. Uh, 
Okay. Um, this was an exponential growth problem. Let's look at an exponential decay problem. All right. So on the other hand, stuff like number 16. And here it says an artifact originally had 16 grams of carbon-14 present. The decay model A equals uh, 16, it's a 16, e to the um, negative 0 0.000, I think it's 121t, describes the amount of carbon-14 present after t years. Use this model to solve the equation. So number 16 wants to know how much is present after 11,430 years. So this has to do with carbon dating. So how much is present after 11,430 years? So in that case, A is equal to 16E to the negative 0 0.000121 times T, which is 11,430 in this case. Okay. And all you have to do is plop that into your calculator, and you're good to go. 16 times... <sighs> e to the negative 0 0.000121 times 11430. And I'm getting approximately 4.01 grams. And uh, that's about all we'll, we'll worry about for now. Um, if we get any extra time in class, we can start talking about logarithms and how to solve uh, different forms of those equations in the exponential growth and decay section. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.